Hello everyone, today I have for you a very juicy matchup. In fact, it doesn't get much juicier than this, and that statement may not even be limited to the world of chess. What I have for you is the one and only Hans Moke Neiman with the white pieces up against Sven Magnus Carlsen playing black, who responds to his e4 with e5. And you really need to stick around at the end of this game, because it ends exactly how you're hoping it will. Spoiler alert, it's not a draw. Is there anyone out there who hopes for a draw when these two play? Let me know in the comments. Bishop to c4 now from Hans Neiman, playing the bishop to, I guess it's the Italian square because this is known as the Italian bishop. This is the Spanish bishop, and I don't know, maybe this is the Greek bishop or something. But this is a very old school opening. It was studied as early as the 16th century. We have very mainline moves here, knight to f6. The most popular response from Hans Niemann, d3. Second most popular would be knight to g5 going for f7. And as long as you remember as black that you need to play d5, you're going to be on your way to a correct defense. But you're probably going to have to study some more opening moves here because it can get a little bit complicated. But from Hans Niemann, we have the very tame d3. And now most popular for black would be to play bishop to e7, bishop to c5, just get ready to castle. But from Carlsen we have h6, which is known theory, maintaining flexibility with that dark squared bishop. In some lines g6 is played, the bishop goes to g7. We have c3 from Hans Niemann, supporting d4 at some point. Also supporting the move b4 to give that bishop a kick if Carlsen does decide to put it on c5. d6 now from Carlsen, supporting the e-pawn, giving up on the idea of getting his bishop outside the pawn chain. Now a4 from Hans Niemann. We have an interesting series of moves now. Carlsen playing very predictable moves, and Hans Niemann doing what we tell beginners not to do, and that is move the same pawn three times in the opening. It goes to a6, which isn't the engine's top choice, but it doesn't think it's that bad, which goes to show that every opening principle has its exceptions. Hans Niemann has gained space on the queen side. This pawn is now two steps away from the promotion square, which is just inherently valuable. If you can maintain it throughout the game, of course, getting a pawn on a square like this does have its drawbacks, and Magnus Carlsen here decides not to take the pawn, which is a decent move, but instead to play b6 and just fix that pawn on that square, and he's going to try to argue throughout this game that that pawn is more of a liability than an asset for Hans Niemann, and it's going to be targeted down the road. We have castles, bishop to e6 from Carlsen, already looking to eliminate one of the defenders of that pawn. Bishop takes, bishop takes, knight b to d2, rook to e1, rook a to d8, knight to f1, this is a standard maneuver, opening the diagonal for the dark squared bishop, looking to redeploy it to the g3 square shortly. And now, right out of the beginner playbook from Magnus, we have rook to f7. Let's double those rooks on the half open file. h3 now, giving the king some luft prevents knight to g4 so that bishop to e3 can be played without being harassed. And there's another point to this move which Hans Niemann doesn't realize. We're going to see what that is in a minute. Rook d to f8 completes the doubling on the half open f file there. And now the engine here is saying that the best move for white is knight to h2. That is another point to having played h3. It's best to back up this knight with another minor piece because there's a lot of firepower coming down this half open file now. But Hans Niemann goes for knight to g3. And based on what I just told you about knight to h2 being the best move, what do you think black should play now? It's not what Carlsen played, but take a minute and see if you can find the engine's top move for black. Magnus Carlsen went for queen to c8, but the best move is actually knight to h7. Just opening the file for the rooks. And if you just were to try to continue developing normally as white, you can already sacrifice on f3. After g takes f3, we got either knight to g5, bishop to g5, not winning or anything for black, but there was already ample compensation for the sacrificed exchange. But getting back to the game, we had knight to g3, queen to c8, eyeing that pawn there and clearing the d7 square for the knight. So bishop to e3, knight to d7, he wants to go to b8, target the a6 pawn that way. Seems very reasonable. But according to the engine, white can already get over a one pawn advantage if you were to play a move like b4 or the best move here, which is queen to a4. Just kind of screws up Carlson's whole idea here of trying to target this pawn since the c6 knight is under fire and the pawn is defended by two pieces. But Hans doesn't play that. He goes for d4, striking in the center. It's also a very human thing to want to do when you see that your opponent is going to do something on the wing. That's what we're all taught. Now here the best move for Carlsen would be to play knight to a5, just blocking this a file here, and now you can contest the center right away with c5. 
but instead he misses his chance to equalize. He plays e takes d4, c takes d4, and then knight d to b8. He's just fixated on trying to win that pawn, but this is actually a losing blunder. If Hans Niemann were to play d5 here, forcing that knight off c6, black would have some major problems. He's got ideas of knight to d4, jumping into e6, if you were to try to play knight to b4 at this moment, then queen to b3 is a problem because you're attacking the knight. You're also hitting e6. So you're not too worried about losing that pawn there because this is much stronger for white. That rook's going to have to move. And then we can jump into f5, hitting the bishop. Yeah, this is nasty. So that would have been the winning move. But Hans Niemann, after a bit of a think, decided to play queen to e2 and just defend that pawn. Way too tame against a force like Carlsen. Knight to b4 now. This time the move is good. We have rook e to c1, putting the rook opposite of the queen, but c5 was Carlson's plan here. Now that knight is a permanent fixture, hitting this pawn here, which will probably be won, but Hans here still believes that he has something due to his better development, so he strikes in the center. He says, I'm gonna break things open, and I don't care about your knight on b4 there, or my pawn on a6. Of course, he's hoping for D takes E5 and plopping that knight right there on the beautiful E5 square. But Carlson knows better. He plays D5. Allowing Hans Niemann to execute a tactic here, which may look good on the surface, but it is actually losing. D takes C5, D takes C5. And it's always tempting to play these tactics when you see them because you feel really tricky. Knight to D4. This pawn is pinned. Knight can't be taken. If white had one more move here, then you could play queen to g4, target that e6 pawn. It'd be very nice. But it's not white's turn to move. It's black's. And Carlson plays queen to d7 right away, breaking the pin. This knight now has to move. So it goes back to c2. Okay, maybe we're going to eliminate that b4 knight. But here comes d4 with an attack on the bishop. But Neiman says, I'm going to pin you again with rook to d1. There's no take in the bishop. But Carlson plays knight d5, breaks the pin, and that knight is now sitting on a beautiful square. So the bishop does have to move, which unfortunately drops the pawn on f2. Rook takes f2. We got queen to g4 from Hans Niemann, hoping to get something going against Carlson's king. He is threatening bishop to h6 at this moment. The g-pawn's pinned, but Carlson again just steps out of the pin. Knight to h5, threatening checkmate on g7. Bishop to d8 defends. Now b4. Trying to undermine this pawn duo here. But Carlson says, I don't even need these pawns to win. He plays knight to c6. He's attacking e5. If you play queen to g3, then he's just going to attack it further with bishop to c7. What are you going to do? So instead, Hans Niemann takes on c5. He lets the pawn go because he gets to grab this pawn here on d4. Now the engine's saying that black can already win with a sacrifice. Rook takes g2 check. This is not what Carlson played, but you can see that after the king recaptures and queen to c6, setting up the nasty discovered check, the king doesn't really have a safe square. You go to h2, you're losing your queen. You go to g3, then bishop to c7 is just going to set up another discovered check. There's nowhere this king can hide. But what's played in the game by Carlson instead of the immediate sack on g2 was bishop to c7. Okay, it's still a winning move. He sees the idea. Queen to e4 is played, stopping any rook takes g2 sack. You know, the queen is there to recapture. But Carlson has other threats. He plays his queen to f7. He's hitting the knight on h5, tripling up on this open file. Knight to g3, getting out of the way. Now, almost anything black plays here wins. As you can see, there's the potential for a discovered attack right here. So this knight can really go anywhere and this knight on g3 will be under attack. Carlson goes for the most forcing. He plays knight to f3 check. Now, you move the king somewhere, you're just going to drop the piece on d2. So you got to try taking out the knight. But here comes rook takes f3, hits the knight on g3, drops back to e2. Now queen to h5 from Carlson, looking to pick up this h pawn and checkmate will not be far away. Hans Niemann, desperate to get the queens off the board, plays his queen to g4. Carlson, of course, says, no thank you. You're going to be checkmated. Moves his queen to e5, hitting the knight on e2, threatening mate on h2. What are you doing about that? Hans Niemann decided to play knight f4. The engine's giving queen to g2 because it's the only move that it's not seeing a forced mate for, even though it's totally losing after rook to f6, threatening to go to g6, which would pin that queen. What are you going to do? Try to get out of the way? Yeah, we'll go to g6 anyway, because if you take... Guess what? Checkmate. But back to the game, what we had was knight to f4. Carlson takes with the knight, which does allow Hans Niemann to grab the rook on f3. 
But now we have a forced mate in eight moves, beginning with knight to e2 check. Now, if you want to be checkmated in seven moves, you're going to take the knight with your queen and then put your bishop here and sacrifice it just so you can sacrifice the rook right here. The bishop has blocked the file here, so there's no more checkmate for black. But what human's going to do that, right? Hans Niemann instead played king to g2, which does allow a checkmate in three moves. After queen to h2 check from Carlsen, Hans Niemann put his king on f1. His queen is removed with check. King to e1. Kind of nice that he didn't resign, because now we get to see Magnus Carlsen execute the actual checkmate with queen to f2. Hans Niemann is mated. Exactly the result that you were hoping for, unless you're one of those people who's rooting for Hans Niemann, or one of those weirdos who's always hoping for a draw. But it's always fun to watch these two play, because they come to the board with a lot of baggage. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're probably quite new to chess, unless you've just been living in isolation somewhere, secretly preparing, getting ready to make your big debut in the chess world. Anyway, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy this content, and I'll see you on the next one.